Welcome to Baba's Talk Show, recorded live in Gold Coast, Australia. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of Baba's Talk Show. I'm Hussein Baba. As you know, on Fridays, I invite guests, special guests, to come and have a short chat with us. So today, I have a special guest. I is well known in the multicultural scene, and many of you know who will be. This is Brother Robert. How are you? Good, good. Good, good morning. Good to yep. see you. Good morning. Okay. Yep. Yes, travel all the way from Brisbane. How was the drive? Uh, all good. Uh, oh. We had a bit of traffic, but yeah. Uh, yeah, all good. That's what is expected when you are driving right. uh, down to Goldie on a Friday. That's right. That's yeah. right. You see, uh, I've known uh, Robert for a couple of years now, and uh, he's always in the multicultural gatherings, events. So, um, and I will be very interested to know about you because it's always a short time. You always meet for a short time and then that's out. So, um, Robert, first of all, can you give us some of your, like, your background, where you came from? Uh, what's your background like? Yeah, so my background is uh, uh, obviously, as we've talked previously, uh, yeah. briefly, is yeah. my background. I come from uh, East Africa, the eastern part of Africa, right. uh, born in a country called Uganda to Rwandan parents. Right. I came to Australia in, in 2009 on, oh. uh, under the humanitarian pathway. Right. Uh, and I've found this country to be uh, a fantastic place to live in. Okay, good, yeah. good. So, uh, why chose Queensland? Yep. So, uh, like I mentioned, being a humanitarian pathway, right. is that my background was journalism. Yes. Uh, I used to be uh, an international uh, investigative journalist across oh. the African continent, okay. working for major okay. uh, news, national and international newspapers. All but right. along the way, disagreed with uh, a couple of governments, right. including the current Rwandan president Paul Kagame. So, okay. uh, so in that. In, in that mix of uh, work and profession and uh, not not agreeing with uh, yes. uh, people in power, especially the uh, di di dictators like right. the current Rwandan president, right. uh, yeah. I had to live and ended up in Australia on a humanitarian pathway. Okay. I didn't know that you're an investigative reporter. <laughs> that's the first time I'm hearing. All right. So that's a big change for you. Yeah, Being yeah. an investigative reporter now into multicultural activities, yeah, uh, Robert, just uh, give us a, like, what do you do actually in the multicultural scene? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a great question, and I've done uh, a number of things over the years. Right. Uh, across uh, local government, yes. non-government, and uh, state government. Right. Uh, currently, I work with an, a great organization, statewide organization called uh, uh, QPAST. Right. Uh, and basically what I do, yes. uh, and, and looking at specific uh, areas or right. local government areas. I work across Brisbane, right. uh, Logan, Toowoomba, Cairns and Townsville, right. uh, building partnerships and collaborations right. across migrant refugee communities yes. uh, with stakeholders and agencies across non-government, uh, government and private sector. Okay, that's very interesting. Yeah. So that takes up, I think, a large portion of your uh, time, isn't it? Absolutely. You're working with different organizations, Travel here, travel there. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Looking at, uh, I work with so many uh, communities uh, and from different countries that have ended up in Australia, either on humanitarian pathways. Yes. Uh, others have ended up uh, in skilled pathways. Others, family reunion. Others, right. uh, students. Right. Uh, and, and within that, I work across thematic areas. Right. Building belonging. Right. Healing. Right. Uh, thriving and justice. Okay. So uh, within that, you'll be building governance capabilities of right. communities. Right. Uh, also building uh, partnerships and weaving collaborations across those communities. Right. With relevant stakeholders and agencies. Yes. Uh, to make sure that there's that there's that sense of healing, there's that sense of belonging. Right. There's that thriving for communities, individuals, and families. Yeah. Uh, but also there's uh, at the end of it, people. Uh, uh, feel a sense of safety and justice, okay. uh, uh, both in place and broader society. And I do that across the state, but predominantly in the areas and regions that I've mentioned, Brisbane, Logan, okay. Toowoomba, Cairns, and Townsville. Okay. Yeah. Robert, that's not the reason you're still single. <laughs> <laughs> you do so much work. Hey, he's an eligible bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I don't go to the personal side, let's leave it as it is. Uh, okay, um, I know because uh, the number of uh, people from various cultural backgrounds is increasing, 
especially in, on, in the Queensland, and we are noticed uh, in Gold Coast as well. Uh, over here, uh, we have over 80 different uh, uh, people from different background, 80 different cultural background. I'm talking about the mosque itself, Islamic community. Now, similarly, if you look at whole Queensland, there'd be more than that. And, uh, and uh, what I would like to know is, is the government providing sufficient, uh, let's say, uh, help or assistance to many of these uh, people from cultural backgrounds? Yeah, I think uh, uh, you, can, you, might look it, you might look at it uh, this way, that uh, government is playing its bit. Yes. Uh, but also the community is playing that bit. Okay. We can't say that the support being provided across, and when we are talking government, yeah. obviously we are talking uh, about the three-tier right. government system, which right. is the local government, the uh, state, state government, government, and the federal government. And federal. government. Yes. So at different levels, support is being provided. Right. But in our conversations, whether I'm working with Rohingyans, whether I'm working with Karen or Karenis, whether I'm working with Hazaras or working with uh, Somalis and Rwandans, or right. whether working with uh, Ukrainians, or working with any other community in between, right. is that uh, the system is trying as much as possible to provide right. what it can based on uh, the needs presented. Okay. Uh, but what we are working with uh, with the community is to make sure that those loopholes right. and they keep changing. Right. The issues and uh, the issues being presented and the barriers and challenges change with time. Okay. Pre-COVID, no one knew that COVID is going to be here. That's right. We ended up having a pandemic. Yes. Uh, Australia as a country, and Queensland in particular, is prone to disasters. Right. Uh, natural disasters, bushfires, floods, and all that. That's so, right. Uh, within that, the system is putting all uh, strategies and measures in place. Right. Uh, that's well appreciated. Right. But we also need to understand that uh, the community. Right. Uh, from the perspective in which I work, is yes. that the community has the answers and solutions. Right. That's the model. Yes. Uh, and I tend to apply the appreciative inquiry model. Is right. That, uh, the system is trying its bit. Right. Uh, but we still see increasing gaps and barriers, okay. especially post pandemic, because we are talking things to do with cost of living pressures, yeah. housing crisis, uh, youth, youth crime issues, right. uh, and health. Uh, equity and access issues happening. Okay. So uh, what we are trying is to empower the community to be able to support the systems right. uh, to work together. But what we also want to see on the other side uh, is to make sure that the government and the systems on the other side appreciate the solutions being provided by the community right. uh, to, uh, bridge, to bridge that gap okay. through consultations, uh, through checking uh, whether the system and policies in place right. are really fit for purpose or need yeah. to be exist exited and we do something new. Right. Uh, so that's what we work with okay. uh, in the communities to empower them uh, to provide solutions right. uh, that would help the system to respond, pro to proactively respond uh, okay. a bit better. An example would be in yes. floods as yes. an example. Right. You provide so much support. The multicultural yes. social network at the Gold Coast right. provides so much support on yes. ground. Right. Uh, but you will need volunteers that right. are really resourced and yes. helped and trained. Right. Uh, you need uh, you need an environment where you you're provided and welcome to uh, give this support, whether right. material or moral or emotional. Yes. Uh, so we want to make sure that the community is really uh, provided an opportunity to give practical solutions right uh, and I think on the other side the system is responsive right. but we still have so much work to do okay you say there is so much work to do I know you have mentioned some of the improvement can you uh, highlight which areas can be improved uh, any area that can be specifically that you feel needs improvement like like what yeah so for instance uh, given that uh, we work across so many, right. so many communities and groups, right. is that there are some areas and gaps that are in some areas and some systems, the right. gaps are so high. Okay. As an example is we have, uh, for instance, access to grants and resources. Right. They make the grants way much easier to access right. uh, for the communities to be able to build things, right. build partnerships and consult right. and hold cultural celebrations. Right. Same as projects. Right. They'll be able to access grants and build community-led projects right. uh, that will be able to uh, uh, be able to transform communities, right. uh, 
change lives of individuals and families. So right. We have employment or barriers to employment. Right. Those are things that are really ongoing, uh, and I can refer you to uh, what uh, the current, uh, the, the recent landmark uh, Deloitte Access Economics report right. uh, presented to the government was right. that if, if the current migrant and refugee communities Yes. skills yes. were harnessed properly in the next 10 years right the the return for the state would be 260 million dollars okay but currently you have yes. uh, engineers you have uh, people who used to be lawyers and doctors mm -hmm. uh, doing odd jobs uh, driving that, uber or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. not that those jobs are not important yeah, yeah yeah but those skills can be harnessed yeah of course and then to be able to cover the current uh the this current is, gaps that yeah, we have yeah. uh, in the in the in the market. So yeah, those are some of the that's right. uh, really great examples. And the delays, uh, for instance, in the visa processes yes. uh, and the backlogs. Right. These are conversations that we continue to right. uh, have with the relevant agencies to right. make sure that uh, people are not waiting to reunite with their families yes, for yes. over five, ten, yes. more than ten years. Yes. Uh, I think that's not practical. Not practical, yeah. yeah. Uh, so those are some of the practical examples that we so, can... So these are the areas that need improvement, yeah. further improvement. Yeah, and there are many others, but those are some of the some, clause. Of course, of course, yeah. uh, of course. Uh, I also come across uh, some of these issues. And uh, so hopefully... Um, this can be tackled as time goes by and the government can also put more effort to liaising with all these different organizations. I'm sure you should be able to work it out. And uh, Robert, having said that, if somebody want to get involved in these multicultural activities like you, what you do, what do you think they should be prepared for? Or what qualifications they need? Yeah, I think it's a broad range. I right. think the the sector, the community sector, right. I think welcomes a diverse range of qualifications. I can't say that this is a specific qualification that is suitable. Right. Of course, the common ones would be social services, human services, right, uh, and anything in between. Right. Uh, the the social services and health, um, yeah, uh, and health economy and right. the qualifications uh, they are in. But uh, it's a broad range of qualifications. But the most important thing is to uh, move into the sector wanting to make change or right. affect change. It right. could be policy change. Yes. It could be supporting individuals, families, and communities. Right. Uh, but also, most importantly, making sure that uh, you're willing and have the compassion yes. uh, to respond to the needs of vulnerable communities, right. individuals, and families right. uh, to give them really a fair go Good. Uh, across, uh, across local communities, across the state and across the country at large so yeah. uh, that's that that should be really the basic motivation good uh, for people working in the sector to yes. improve uh, the social and social economic welfare of individuals uh, families and communities across right. the journey to find healing belonging yes uh, and then thrive and find justice and safety uh, and a sense of full fulfillment and uh, self-reliance i that's think good. Uh, that's really important. Very important. Yeah. And I like when you just mentioned, you use the word compassion. Yeah. That's the key word. Because you really need compassion when you're dealing with people from different cultural backgrounds. They may not speak your language and some may not even speak English. So you have to be patient, compassionate, and kind, extend care. And I'm sure, as you know, Robert, I've been preaching this for the last five years. And you're very familiar. But maybe some of the audience, uh, I would like to repeat again. I got the sign here which says, no matter where you come from, no matter what language you speak, no matter what your religious beliefs are, we are all brothers and sisters in humanity. Therefore, we should respect each other, extend love and care, and be compassionate to one another. Yeah. This is a very important message uh, which we need to spread. I know you are already doing it. Uh, you are one of the instruments preaching uh, uh, the compassion, uh, it's very important because, as you know, population is growing. Uh, people come from different backgrounds. We need to understand them. If you have to have a lot of patience uh, because they come from, uh, when they say different background, they also come from different environment, war-torn areas. So a lot of issues are there when they come. They come with a baggage. So you really have to be 
caring and kind and listen to them. So that's good. Any final word, uh, Robert? Yep, I think at this point is uh, to thank you for the opportunity to uh, yep, share uh, my few experiences yes. on your network and yes. uh, be able to share that with your listeners and viewers. Yes. Uh, but also have an opportunity to thank you for the great work you do, not just in the Gold Coast region, but also the wider uh, Queensland and, and Australia, be it advocacy, be it practical support during disasters and all that. Right. Uh, but also take an opportunity to thank all the agencies yes. uh, that are willing yes. uh, to go an extra step and an extra mile right. to support uh, individuals, families and communities that are vulnerable Yes. Uh, and those that have come through uh, from the war-torn areas, yes. those who have multiple and complex barriers That's across right. the state and regions. Yes. Uh, I think those are stakeholders and their government, their non-government, their pri private sector. That's right. And we have so many examples of those. Right. Uh, I think it's an opportunity to uh, thank them for yes. uh, going an extra mile, true, going true. all the way to be able to support vulnerable individuals, families and communities. True, yes. Because that that's, that's right, really what makes Australia. Great You're right. Country. I agree. You know, I give an example. A couple of months ago, you know, that I was uh, uh, collecting blankets and distributing in Queensland. So this particular organization, one particular lady from me, she came at nine o'clock and is out of her because by five, six o'clock, you guys are uh, I mean that. But she went out of the way, first and then drove all the way from Brisbane to pick up the blankets and take it to Tuamba. So um, you see, they're doing a lot of things. Uh, not because the job required them to do, but they do out of their own uh, heart. They've all got good heart. They want to do something. It's not everything is money, money, money. They really want to do out of it. So I've seen this example. And there are many of them are like that. And hopefully we can groom more. And uh, so that's why we have to emphasize on the youngsters. It's very important, our youngsters. So in my program, I involve youngsters as volunteers. As you know, we are private. We don't depend on government funding. It's all privately uh, coordinated and funded. So we, have, we are trying to get more youth involved in multicultural activities to start off, make them volunteers in the meals program and a few other programs. All right, uh, Robert, it was very interesting to hear from your side. It's a very long time I wanted to speak with you and finally we got a chance and that's good. And um, before you go, I have a small token of appreciation for coming. So, Robert, thank you for coming. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks yeah, very I much. hope you like it. Yep. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Right. And I, okay. And inshallah, we'll see you next week with another special guest. So, thank you for watching. See you next time. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.